Hello friends, welcome back to Solid Gold Scripture Journals. This is a place where I share the joy that comes as we study the scriptures and learn about Jesus Christ. Today we're working in the Come Follow Me manual, 3 Nephi 1 to 7. But before we do that, I just want to talk about music and the scriptures. Some people like to listen to music as they study their scriptures. And this week it was really neat because the church released the second batch of new hymns. And hymn number 1010 is Amazing Grace. And I just want to show you how the new hymns are laid out. So it's Amazing Grace and they give you two scripture references to go along with it. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 to 10 and Moroni 10, 32 to 33. They've got three verses of Amazing Grace, and then at the bottom, they give you sometimes a little blurb, and I do enjoy a good blurb. So this beloved hymn reminds us of Nephi's anguished cry, O wretched man that I am. Then remembering the Lord's mercy, Nephi added, My soul will rejoice in thee, my God. And there's another scripture attached to that, 2 Nephi chapter 4 verses 17 and 30. The text of this hymn was included in an early hymn book of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in 1841. And now it's back again. So the text was by John Newton in 1779, and the music is an American folk tune from the 19th century. I really like this hymn. It has a special meaning in my heart because one day it was lunchtime at school. There was nothing to do, so I auditioned for a choir. I didn't have a song that I wanted to sing for the audition, but the choir director would keep a copy of Amazing Grace on the piano because most people know it, and they could sing it. And I sang it, and I sounded terrible, but for some reason, the grace. Of God, let's just say. I got into the junior choir and it really changed my life. I made new friends. I really enjoyed music uh, a lot for the first time in my life. And I always have really loved Amazing Grace because of that. Of course, I love the grace of God and the message too. This is a great way to study the scriptures is to just look at the hymns. Look at the scriptures that go with the hymns. Do some reading. That's a fun way to do it. So today we're working on 3 Nephi 1 to 7. This is for September 16 to 22nd. Lift up your head and be of good cheer. So before we study the scriptures, I always like to remind us all to just say a prayer so we can have the spirit with us to guide and direct our studies. In 3 Nephi 1 to 7, it talks about how this was an exciting time to be a believer in Jesus Christ because prophecies were being fulfilled. Great signs and miracles among the people indicated that the Savior would soon be born. But on the other hand, it was an anxious time for the believers because in spite of the miracles, the unbelievers insisted that the time was past for the Savior to be born and this caused a great uproar and even had the unbelievers set a date to kill the believers if the sign prophesied by Samuel the Lamanite did not appear. And that sign was a day and a night and a day without darkness. So these were really difficult circumstances. So the prophet Nephi cried mightily to his God in behalf of his people. So this isn't Nephi from the beginning of the Book of Mormon. This is a new Nephi. I think it's Helaman's grandson. The Lord's response was, lift up your head and be of good cheer. I will fulfill all which I have caused to be spoken by the mouth of my holy prophets. So we're going to do some ideas for learning at home and at church. So this is the whole thing. Third Nephi 1 to 7. It says, becoming converted to the gospel of Jesus Christ requires patience and effort to really hard things. You think, I just, I just want to believe in God and that's it. But actually, it requires patience and effort to be converted. So this reading describes people who were converted to the Lord and others who were not. And they have a chart. Now, if you've been with my channel for any length of time, you know 
how much I love a chart. I'll get out my rulers and my markers and make a chart. So in the chart, they give us several scriptures. So rather than reading the whole thing, you can just choose a few scriptures. And then we're going to read the scripture and determine things that weaken conversion and then things that strengthen conversion. And then we'll have a whole big list to work on in our own lives. So I'm going to set up my scripture journal and then I'm going to make a chart and then we'll start reading together to fill out that chart. We can start together and then I'll leave it to you to complete the week of study. I'm just here to get us started. I'm going to start with 3 Nephi 1, 5 to 11. And as I read it, let's read in 3 Nephi 1, 5 to 11 about things that weaken conversion and things that strengthen conversion. So I've gone through and marked what I found that strengthens conversion. So in this passage, we're talking about the believers and they are waiting for a sign of the birth of Christ. And so they are waiting. They are watching steadfastly for that day and that night and that day. And one reason why they're watching so steadfastly is because the, the unbelievers, they are going to kill them on a certain day if this sign does not happen but they are watching steadfastly and i think a sign that strengthens conversion is just when we are steadfast in our beliefs next i'm going to look up third nephi 1 29 to 30. It says here that there was a lot of sorrow amongst the Lamanites because the younger generation were being led away by lyings and flattering words of the Zoramites and began to join the Gadianton robbers. They began to decrease in their faith and righteousness because of the wickedness of those around them. So we cannot fall for lying and flattering words. Well, my chart has been started. I have a thing to strengthen my conversion. I have a thing to weaken my conversion, but there's so much more to do. Unfortunately for you, I have a chili cook-off to attend. I made some chili. The house smells great. It's a contest. Wish me luck. I've never won a cooking contest in my life. I cannot foresee that today will be any different, but I will let you know if I win, obviously. But more importantly, I hope that gets you started on your Come Follow Me study for the week. And I hope that you find what you need as you prayerfully study the scriptures. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.